uh, we are from Osaka University, and we are so excited to be here uh, to present our work at this uh, kicking of uh, Cube, Cube Day event. Um, my name is Infan, and uh, Sogawa is my, the, the co-speaker, and uh, our team member, uh, Mr. Matsuda, and the team leader, Professor Matsuoka, is also here with us today. So we are so excited about planning this work, and this is about the uh, uh, energy-aware data center operating system that is dedicated for the environmental sustainabilities for the cloud-native uh, computing systems. So here is the outline of my talk today. Um, so first uh, and foremost, I will talk about a little bit of uh, about ourselves, and uh, I will talk about the 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 background, uh, the background of this uh, uh, this talk, which is the uh, challenge of the environmental suspend, uh, challenge of the uh, power consumption on cloud edge computing systems, and I will talk about the detail of the proposed uh, solution, uh, energy aware data center operating system. Uh, we name it EADOS. So at this point, you might be interested about uh, so what kind of uh, data center uh, we are talking about and what, how much data uh, power consumption reduction we are talking about here. So all of this will be demoed through a test bed data center, about 200 uh, physical servers. So this project is initiated uh, and supported by the NATO and expect to uh, develop the energy saving technology from Osaka University and the several uh, other joint research partners. So based on this uh, open consortium alliance, the success of this project will not only uh, reduce the carbon footprint of the cloud net computing and also will bring the um, cost reduction and business benefit for the research partners. So um, I'd like to share about it, uh, our milestone uh, quit a little bit. Um, our research group has been working on developing uh, power consumption reduction relay technology in the data center. In 2019, we created two data centers in the Osaka site. Uh, after that, various of the uh, technology have been conducted, carried on in this data center. Uh, such as the emulsion cooling, uh, CFD, and uh, machine learning for power consumption prediction and uh, data center power reductions. Recently, we moved our work through uh, a workload allocation, and it is based on the Kubernetes East. And this work uh, was accepted in the uh, CNCF last year in North America. And later on, it also be report on a, a technical block. So as we know, the environmental sustainability of cloud computing is indeed a crucial concept. So in this year, uh, quarter three, we start our NATO project. And uh, almost the same time, in the um, CNCF, there is a uh, Environmental Sustainability uh, Technical Advisor Group, Tech Group, was created inside the CNCF. So this tech group was created to support and assist uh, cloud native related uh, project that related to uh, environmental sustainabilities. Uh, we have been joining this group and we will continue work close with this tech and inside the CNCF. So let me first explain the background of this proposal. So as of the today, we know that uh, we continue uh, growing the scale of the cloud native computing. And it is currently the data center runs about 2% uh, of worldwide power consumptions. And it is expected to be a, a 15 times more in the future 10 years. So that's why we are thinking about building a energy array data center operation system 
to reduce the power consumption of the data center. So um, this is results about uh, how carbon footprint, carbon footprint from the cloud computing will be different based on different roles. For example, uh, type, uh, type of application, type of infrastructure, and type of cloud. So usually, in general, uh, business-related application consume much more energy than content manager applications and the uh, physical machine consume much more than the virtual machine. And for the type of cloud, public clouds, because they have more control, and it is more reliable and less power consumption than private cloud. So what is this important? Um, sorry. And that is because of this huge difference. Tell us there is always an opportunity to reduce the gap of the uh, power consumptions. For example, by using a better uh, management skill like uh, container orchestration or load balancing. And this is what we are here for today. So let me first explain the product image of this proposal uh, based on the technological development views. So the data center operating system to be directed in this proposal is in the uh, middle of the orange block. Uh, which is between the application layer, the gray block in the uh, upper, and the uh, hardware layer in the blue block. Uh, the hardware layer is consists of cloud, edge, and Mac computing environment. Okay, so. Um, now I will explain the technical view from the developing of this uh, architecture. I would like to use a video uh, processing service um, as an example. So uh, it is starting from the great box on the upper left. Then um, the proposed EADO is, is reside in the middle. Then there is a cloud computing resource, the hardware part. Uh, in the uh, blue block. So inside the orange block, there are actually three of uh, A and B and C. That is the control servers, control all the operations, and the four technology, one, two, four, to operate together to achieve the uh, data center energy reduction for this uh, video processing services. So for the process one, when the video processing service start, it send the service definition to the server A, and in the same time, um, we collect the uh, power consumption and the other information from uh, server B. So all work together, information will be uh, uh, sent to the server C, and Microsoft service arrangement and air condition in also including into the server C. So eventually, server C re-evaluated the air conditioning of power, server power, and the response time of information based on the evaluation function. And then they send a new uh, parameter, control parameter, back to the uh, cloud environment. So eventually, uh, everything is optimal, optimized and can be reduce the total power consumption in the uh, uh, cloud environment. So by repeating this kind of five process sequentially for of each load, energy saving can be realized as a result. Uh, in addition, power consumption and the response time model can be flexibly controlled based on the service re uh, requirement. So this kind of flex control uh, mechanism will lead to high return of the business and also the environmental sustainability. So now let's talk about the uh, actual information of this process uh, EADOS and how it works through the goal of the data center energy reduction. So I will talk about starting from the data collection and how we built the machine learning model 
and uh, how we use the machine model to build the uh, workload allocation and eventually reach the goal of the data center energy reductions. So we built our test bed data center in different structure and that is why we want to ensure the purpose of EADOS works in different environment. As an example of these two test bed data center, uh, as you can see from the diagram, they, ha they are different and they have different kind of cooling airflow. So uh, we focus a lot for the air conditioner uh, optimization because it is the largest single unit consume about 25 to 40 percent of total power consumption in the data center. So um, this is uh, why we would like to uh, make uh, focus a lot for reducing the air condition power consumptions. So the way we collecting the data uh, in, in this slide, so this is the example of one of our data center, it contain about 200 uh, servers. So we collect the all of kind of operating parameter, uh, which is around 4,000 per minute and we use the permissives and Zabbix to collect the data. So because of this kind of uh, big data, so some, uh, put in the mini scale, sometimes there is a duplicate and some uh, data description issue or we need to fix. Um, all of this data can be uh, categorized to be three category. Uh, one is the uh, te uh, temperature sensor, so it tells about different uh, temperature inside the data center, and uh, we also collect the detailed parameter of the air conditioners, because uh, as I mentioned, it is the most important device uh, in the data center. Um, most of the data is actually comes from the server, because for example, uh, there are 200 servers, and each server has uh, 8 to 16 fans, so 200 uh, type 16, so this is a lot of para parameters is actually comes from the servers. Uh, so all together for a one year data, it will be about 2.5 to uh, 3 billion of the data. So as you can image this kind of big data, uh, when we want to use it to build a, a different prediction model, it's very uh, time consuming because the origin data is collected in the real time, uh, need to be pre-processed before it can be used. So recently we are starting to move in to use the Kafka platform. And by using the Kafka, uh, Kafka stream process and the KSQL DB, so everything can be run in the uh, real time. Uh, for example, we create uh, um, uh, many different of uh, Kafka topics. Uh, each topic can be considered an uh, um, input of a, a model. So in this sense, um, we can greatly reduce the data amount because uh, everything is processed in real time. We only select what we want and, uh, and all data can be reproduced uh, to build different models. Okay, so after the collecting the data, uh, that's why I want to mention, uh, we put a lot of effort for machine learning technique and uh, because uh, the accurate, accurate person, uh, power prediction model will be lead to the uh, result of optimal ulti task allocation. So eventually with the accurate and reliable uh, power prediction model, the uh, test allocation can be realized and achieve the power consumption reduction of the data center. So um, I think, sorry. Um, next, I would like to have uh, Sogawa. He will share his experience about how he uh, used uh, PyCrate and other software to create a lot of power prediction model. Uh, thank you. Sir. Thank you, Professor Su. I would like to talk about power consumption of data center and its production model. Air conditioning equipment power consumption and server equipment power consumption account for most of the power consumption in a data center. 
To optimize power consumption in a data center, it is most important to reduce the power consumption of these devices. The basic operations that can be performed on the air conditioning equipment are the temperature and the airflow settings of each air conditioner. Another operation that can be performed on the server equipment is to determine which servers to place the workloads on. To optimize power consumption in a data center, it is necessary to know how power consumption changes when operations such as controlling air conditioning and server task placement are performed. If we can quickly predict the power consumption of each operation, we can optimize power consumption by performing the operation with a small rest increase in power consumption among the possible patterns. Therefore, we build a model to predict the power consumption of each device, uh, server, and air conditioning using information available from the standpoint of each device administrator. Since the air conditioning administrator cannot know detailed information such as CPU utilization for each server, they can only use the power consumed by each server and the backplane temperature. In addition, since the power consumption of air conditioning is greatly affected by the outside temperature and humidity, this information is also used. Since detailed information on air conditioning equipment is not available to the server administrator, the server CPU utilization, server ambient temperature, and static pressure difference between the front and back planes are used. The static pressure difference is information equivalent to the amount of airflow through the server. Since power consumption is a characteristic that varies from device to device, a power consumption model must be created for each device. However, once a model is built for one device, it can be used universally for that device, so the model is built using only information that can be easily obtained. I will discuss how we build the model I just described. On Kubernetes, we have deployed the MLflow, which allows us to easily compare the results of our experiments. Using MLflow, the results of the experiments can be checked and shared from a browser, and the results can be aggregated from a Python script. PyCaret is equipped with a standard function to record the results of experiments in MLflow, so it is possible to conduct sufficient experiments working with MLflow with a very small amount of code. Files shared by each node, such as experimental data and training data, are placed on the file server and downloaded to each pod using FTP when the port for model training is started. The file server is also used as storage for experimental data that MLflow refers to. By establishing such an environment in our laboratory, we are able to easily conduct various experiments in the research process in a unified manner. It is also very useful for sharing the results of experiments. Comparing models using PyCaret can be done with just a few written programs. This graph shows the scatter of errors in each model when training data for CPU utilization, ambient temperature, static pressure difference, and power consumption for each server. In this experiment, models are created for each server's data, so the number of models that must be created is large and requires the use of multiple computers. Therefore, it is necessary to consider things that need not be considered when the experiment is done on a single computer, such as aggregation of results. Even in such cases, Kubernetes, PyCaret, and MLflow can be used to conduct experiments without having to think about complexities. Next, Professor Su will talk about how we use machine learning model to reduce energy consumption in data centers. Okay, thank you, Sokakun. Uh, I think uh, we run out a little bit of time, but uh, I will take another couple of minutes to go to the FAQ time to go to the couple more slides. So, um, so I want to jump to the how we built the workload 
uh, locations. So we extend the uh, Kubernetes scheduler to WAL scheduler, and we extend the uh, load balancer to WAL load balancers. So in this sense, the power consumption can be controlled in the priority, and also resigning time can be controlled uh, uh, in advance. So we can also be balanced between the power consumption and the responding time. So um, this is how we we actually in, uh, use the scoring function of the uh, uh, cube uh, scheduler to extend uh, our uh, wall scheduler, and we use the um, uh, metal LB to extend as our wall LB. So this is the how it's collecting the data and build the machine learning in the runtime. So we have uh, set up the experience as the demo. So in this experience, it's based on a data center with 200 servers, and it is for using uh, object detection applications. So we combine our uh, WAP schedule and WLB together with comparison with the default uh, cube, uh, metal LB and cube schedules. schedulers. So the result shows um, the cube spectral reduced about 13% of the best results shows reduced 13% of power consumption by comparing to the default cube, Kubernetes uh, scheduling result. So uh, in this talk, uh, we talk about the challenge of the increasing power consumption of cloud edge computing system. And we propose the energy aware data center operating system. So the best result from our system by using the uh, object detecting example is we successfully reduce 13% of the power consumptions. So the last but not least, environmental sustainability is just starting to gain a lot of attention inside the CNCF community. Reducing the carbon hydrogen um, is a social responsibility that everyone needs to be involved. So that is what we are here for, and we will continue to work closely with the CNCF community to achieve the final product of this EADOS. So finally, I would like to give a special thank you for our project sponsor, NATO, uh, for the great support of this research project. Okay, um, thank you for joining us today. So if I'd like to take any question from here. Thank you very much. Any question? Uh, uh, thank you yes. for your presentation. Uh, I have a question about your uh, this research. Uh, I heard, I understand your this prediction model is a kind of based on two data centers. The Saitama data center and the other, sorry, I forgot the name. But uh, how do you think uh, your prediction model or this kind of uh, well, uh, WA can w -A apply to another data center? Uh, excuse me, you say how do WAO is appropriate for Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. So as you know, uh, we focus on uh, the data center, two data centers is in different structure. So this is the first step. and. Uh, uh, even though different data center, it's the power consumption is all from the server, air conditioner, and uh, uh, surrounding area. So uh, we focusing on the both uh, server part and the air condition part, so that we can ensure the our power consumption consumption can work in different environment. And as I knew my thinking about, sometimes the most of the time we cannot control the air conditioner in the most data center. This is the uh, ISP's responsibility. But this project is dedicated for different, so even though you are using the uh, housing or co-location, you can still control your own server. Even though you cannot control the air conditioner, but you can still detect the surrounding ambient temperature of the server, and that's why you can build, uh, optimize your services. But if you are the service provider and you also run the uh, uh, applications like uh, Google, Amazon, uh, that kind of a big uh, player, then you can reduce more power consumption. That's why uh, the concept is saying like uh, in the public cloud service has uh, 
can greatly reduce much more than the uh, private data center. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank thank you. you for answering my question. <laughs> thank you very much. Any questions? So I have a question. Yes. Uh, uh, mm, if uh, you optimize the workload. Uh, workflow. Wa workload. Oh, workload, yes. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you need to know the structure of workload. So right. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So how how do you know the structure of workload? Okay, this is actually a very good question. So the workload actually is the application from the yeah, yeah. user request. Mm -hmm. And in in the past, we starting from very beginning, we use the threads command, which consume threads command is the he heavy duty task which consume all the CPU usage, and uh, um, so. You, you are right, we needed to know the application first, mm. and uh, uh, we knew to need to uh, manipulate the different application in advance. But I think uh, some uh, application, for example, it's like a business-oriented uh, content management, they have a similar behavior. So that's why we focus on building uh, many different machine models. Uh, in the future, we want to uh, have more advanced way to uh, build machine learning models based on different category of application, different uh, process of the uh, software applications. So even though there are a lot of different applications, but I think uh, we believe they still can be categorized. So that's why we can build different category of machine learning models. And our focus will uh, try to build a machine learning model as quick, as accurate as possible. Okay, uh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much.